Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hey guys, welcome so much. Thank you for being the wonderful pet parents you are and joining me today on the Pet Parenting Reset. Today, we are talking about improving your dog's gut health. And oh my goodness, is this so incredibly important? I want to say this is all very true for cats as well, but I know that in most instances that I have found um, people, for the most part, Uh, people start with their dogs and then what they learn with their dogs, they move on to their cats. So if you are just a cat person, please stick in there and listen. Um, I promise this applies to you as well. If you are just a dog person, definitely stick in there with me because our gut health, our dog's gut health, our cat's gut health is so incredibly important. And it is, it can, it can make or break quality of life hands down, period, full stop. It can make a great quality of life. So a couple things today, I am going to be uh, providing a couple of quotes from Dr. Julianne Lee from The Adored Beast. She is so incredibly amazing. I can't tell you how much I love this woman and I am um, reaching out to her to get her on the podcast so we can talk more in detail about this, but I'm gonna give you uh, five, we're gonna gonna talk about gut health and then I'm gonna give you five really simple ways to improve your dog's gut health. And again, guys, uh, ladies and gentlemen, excuse me, I say guys a lot, that's like, I don't know, my term. Uh, I'm I'm from the South, so we like to just kinda wrap it all up, right? (laughs) Wrap it all up. Get it all in there. Uh, Y'all, how about that? Uh, I'm going to tell y'all five really simple ways you can improve your dog's gut health. So what I want you to know first and foremost is that thank you for being a wonderful pet parent and doing the absolute best you can with what you have available to you and looking for more knowledge. That is so important and I am just, I am here for it. I am here for you and thank you for looking to do more for your pet. Okay, let's get into it. You know, chronic disease and cancer right now in our dogs are at epidemic levels. I would say the same is true about our cats, chronic disease, especially kidney disease. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it, there is such a close relationship in the gut and in your dog's gut and disease and your gut and disease and your cat's gut and disease. Um, so understand while we're all three different species, we are all mammals. So we're different, but the same right? And there are so many different health issues that result from having a damaged gut. And there are lots of different things in the environment that can cause that damage. Um, So let's talk about signs of gut health problems. Of course, we know if there's vomiting or diarrhea, loss of appetite, those are very clear indications, right? But it can be so much more than that. And there is something you may or may not have heard of this before. If you have not, that is okay. Leaky gut, leaky gut syndrome. Uh, You might have heard it called either one of those things. It's basically a term for trauma to the gut. And it can be uh, according, like I was saying earlier, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things that Julianne Lee says. According to Julianne Lee, it can be behind everything from food allergies, to digestive problems, to ear infections, um, also other really common health conditions uh, that can come from inflammatory disorder. Leaky gut is when the junctions is what they're called. They are the microscopic openings that absorb the nutrients in the lining of the mucous membrane become larger than they should, allowing undigested food and other particles, these are 
disease causing pathogens, chemicals, allergens, and other toxins to leak through the intestinal wall and enter into the bloodstream, therefore leading to disease. And again, um, this is a quote from Julianne Lee, and she is my go-to for all things leaky gut. You can definitely check the show notes uh, for more information on uh, Adored Beast Apothecary and Adored Beast, their blog in general is amazing. So let's talk about some of the things that can actually damage the gut because there are so many different things um, that are causing the, the environment inside of the gut, the biome, the mi microbiome inside of the gut <clears throat> to be at what is called dysbiosis. And dysbiosis means there's a decline in the friendly and beneficial gut bacteria. So if you're not familiar with bacteria, there's good bacteria and there's bad bacteria. And there is this symphony between good and bad bacteria in a healthy, thriving microbiome, right? And when we when we see disease, we see more bad bacteria than good. There should be a pretty even field, if not more good than bad, right? So it should be like, there's, there's a, it's really a symphony that's going on in there. And if you're missing one instrument, my goodness, it really throws the whole thing off. So antibiotics are one thing that can, uh, certainly they, they do not discriminate between good and bad bacteria. So anytime your pet does have to have does need antibiotics and hey, they are necessary at times, right? Um, we need to support the gut health before, if at all possible, during, certainly, and after, absolutely. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatories and steroids can also um, create dysbiosis in the gut. Over-vaccination. I know we have talked about this on this podcast. Let me tell you, I am so here for anybody who wants to talk about uh, curtailing the over-vaccination of our pets. Processed foods. How many times have we talked about kibble, guys? I, I don't even know. I don't even know. I, I Generally speaking, in today's society, we have to have a pet get sick before we learn. It's unfortunate, but you know, it is what it is. That's the truth of the matter. And if you are there or if you feel like you're heading there, I feel, I feel for you. I have been there. I promise you I have been there. I know what that feels like and no better do better is the only thing. Yeah. That's what is keeping us moving forward. No better do better, right? Stress is another thing that can greatly impact uh, our gut health as well as our mental health and so many other things, right? Uh, grains or beans, which is basically anything with lectins in them, um, and then yeast. So let's talk about a few things. Um, I said we're gonna talk about five things, five simple things that we can do to help boost gut health in our dog. But again, let me tell you, these things are true for us. These things are true for our cats as well. Probiotics. Um, probably one of the easiest things we can do is add probiotics. Now. And like I was saying, there's good and bad bacteria. We want the good bacteria in abundance, right? Um, when the bad bacteria take over, bad things happen. Probiotics encourage the um, helpful uh, communities of bacteria in the gut to flourish, which crowd out the harmful bacteria and it keeps the body in homeostasis. So species specific probiotics are even better. It's also important, I think, uh, to note here that it, it is important to rotate probiotics because different probiotics that you buy are gonna have different strains of bacteria in them. And the more the merrier, when, especially when we're talking about good bacteria, the more the merrier. Um, let's have loads and loads and loads of different strains of good bacteria in the gut that is going to make for an even healthier uh, microbiome, right, in, in the gut. So rotate your probiotics as well. Prebiotics, ah, there we go. So probiotics and prebiotics are two different things. Without prebiotics, the probiotics would starve and die. So to feed the beneficial bacteria colonies, to feed the good bacteria, 
in the animal's gut. We need prebiotics. And I think we could do a whole uh, episode on prebiotics and probiotics. So I'm not going to go too much further into detail, but um, larch tree uh, produces a prebiotic that is one of the best out there, but there are others. So uh, this is just a little bug in your ear to understand that probiotics are wonderful, but they will starve and die without prebiotics. So we have to do, we have to do those in combination. Um, digestive enzymes. These are also a great way to help flour, help the gut flourish, right? They help break down food into absorbable nutrients. Now we have not talked about digestibility. Uh, I've kind of alluded to it before. Um, on the podcast, but digestibility is a really interesting thing. And it is, I was actually thinking about it the other night. I was in the shower, which is where all good, (laughs) all good ideas come from. Right. And I was thinking about why dogs eat poop and doing an episode on why dogs eat poop. That's called coprophagia. And I started thinking about how we not only need to look at the dog, but in an instance where let's say a dog is eating cat poop out of the litter box and there was a post on social media that i saw that 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 made me think of this um because somebody was like what do i do to get my dog to stop eating out of the cat's litter box basically and i thought gosh we focus so much on the dog in this scenario which is good we need to right because while i'm not going to get too much into this there are lots of different reasons why your dog could be doing what could be exhibiting this behavior also uh, if you talk to julianne lee who is absolutely incredible she's going to tell you humans are pretty much some of the only species on the planet that uh, don't eat feces um so yeah it's actually a very natural thing but gross to us so we want to stop it i get it so, um, but that's one, only one part of the equation when we just look at the dog in this equation, right? Uh, when we're, if we're not thinking about um, the cat and then I started thinking about the digestibility of the food that your cat is ingesting and how that plays a role. So their digestibility is, is, is a topic in and of itself, apparently, because I'm getting on tangent here, guys. <laughs> um, but digestive enzymes are gonna help uh, your pet break down food and absorb the nutrients as best as they possibly can, depending on what food you are feeding. So they can be supplemented. They can be found naturally in foods like uh, pineapple, papaya, kefir is a great one, kiwi or um, ox bile, pancreas. Also, if you, if you feed pancreas, pancreas is, yeah, not easy to find, but if you feed it, um, it's also available there. So let's get to number four. Number four, what we can do, and I know, look, you guys are gonna tell me I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm beating away at this, but this actually comes from Julie and Lee, not just me. So here we go, guys. Eat a species appropriate diet. Um, highly, highly processed foods are particularly hard to digest, and those with a high starch content can be hugely problematic for the body. Carbs turn into sugar, yeast feeds on sugar, therefore unbalancing the microbiome of the gut. Feed a species appropriate diet consisting of fresh whole foods, fresh whole foods, guys. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna fix a lot of issues with this. If you are feeding kibble, if you can add anything else to the bowl, amazing wonderful let's get on that there are so many wonderful things we can add to the bowl and i know i have talked about this ad nauseum um broccoli blueberries meat organ meat uh sardines oysters carrots apples no seeds um the flesh of the avocado i mean so many wonderful things coconut oil some really wonderful things that are a especially great for gut health fermented foods like uh, sauerkraut fermented vegetables kefir and yogurt bone broth and pumpkin 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 like 100 percent pumpkin make sure you're not buying pie filling <laughs> um now also according to dr julian lee um helpful herbs so there are lots of herbs that can help improve digestion 
one of them I have used quite regularly. Um, the others I haven't, but are very interesting. So I'm going to include them. Uh, the first one being Slippery Elm. This is the one that I know about that I have used in the past. Um, it is uh, a tree native to Eastern North America, and it is known for its strengthening and nutritive properties. I don't know why I said that weird. Strengthening and nutritive properties. Um, it exerts a soothing effect on mucous membranes of the digestive tract and can also discourage stomach ulcers for colitis, diverculitis, GI inflammation, acidity, all those wonderful things. Um, the next thing I want to mention is aloe vera. Of course, we know aloe vera for its healing effects on the skin, right? It also is very healing for the intestinal tract. So particularly for use in like if your pet has constipation uh, or just soothing the GI tract. So yeah, it's also shown to help several digestion related issues in humans, just a side note. And Julianne Lee, um, the last one that she recommends is licorice root, which is considered one of the world's oldest herbal remedies. Um, it comes from the root of the licorice plant. It benefits gastric mucosa by improving circulation, secretion of protective layer, and supporting growth of new muco mucosal cells. So uh, Julianne Lee is like, like I said, she is my go-to on the gut. She is my go-to if I have any like questions about leaky gut, because I think so I would venture to say that at this point, the majority of pets are probably experiencing some symptoms of leaky gut. And I, I gotta be honest with you, I think a lot of humans are as well. So I think this is an incredibly important topic, one that deserves a lot more time and attention. So let's talk more about digestive health. I can't tell you how important this is. And there are even some researchers I heard recently and I was like, oh, 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 that makes so much sense. You know, a lot of people think that the brain controls everything that goes on in the body. There is some research to suggest recently, recent research to suggest that the gut controls the brain. How incredible is that? Now I know when I go in to train a dog, or if I'm talking to anyone, um, consulting with anyone about behavioral issues with their pet, my, like I talk to them about so many things behaviorally, but I always, always, always include nutrition because it is so important. If our brain is not functioning properly, then how can we, how can we focus? How can we make appropriate decisions? There are so many things that the nutrition, what we put into our body is what we get out, not just what comes out the other end, but the behavior that comes out, our uh, mental state, right? Our emotional state is all affected by what we put in our body. And this is the more and more I learn about this. I'm telling you guys, I am, I am trying. I am really, really trying. I'm trying to break those habits that I have for myself as well. And I think that this is one of the, one of um, the huge benefits of learning more is that we also do better for ourselves. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. I hope this was incredibly informative and gave you a lot to think about. And I hope it leaves you wanting more because we are definitely going to be talking more about this on future podcasts. So I hope to see you join the family over on Patreon so we can talk about this more in detail and I can get to know more about you and your pets. And I hope you check us out on all social medias. Give the show a follow and make sure you have reviewed it if you have not already. Um, that is the best way to get this show out to more people and help more people and their pets. So I can't do it by myself. I need you. I need you to boost the signal and give the show a five-star review and follow and share with your friends and family or anybody you know that has pets. So thank you again for being the wonderful pet parent that you are. The Pet Parenting Reset is all about different methods for pet parenting success. So 
that's why we talk about so many different things because it is definitely a multifaceted yeah, multifaceted issue. I almost got through that one. All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful rest of your week. Give your pets some extra love from me. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.